All right. Should we get started? All right. Cool. Welcome. Welcome to this uh, NAPI NAPI talk. Uh, you guys having a good uh, conference so far? Yeah. yeah? Good? Good? Yeah! <laughs> That's the way to get started, man. So cool. Um, so how many of you have heard of uh, NAPI? Wow. Great. It's always good to talk to people who know what stuff you're talking about. So, well, this is going to be a joint talk between uh, me and uh, Michael Dawson, and uh, I'm going to start off with uh, a high-level uh, overview of um, what this project was about, what were the motivations and stuff like that. And then uh, Michael was uh, going to go uh, you know, into the nuts and bolts of uh, how the API uh, works. All right, so let's get started. Uh, my name is Arunesh Chandra, and I'm a senior uh, Program Manager on JavaScript uh, Platform and Tools team at Microsoft, and especially uh, involved in uh, Node.js. Um, I've uh, kind of been involved in Node Chakra project from uh, the beginning, and uh, the time travel debugging uh, aspect of it. So yeah, I'm just representing a, a passionate team of people uh, at Microsoft uh, you know, who are working on Node, and some of them are here as well. So uh, we are active in the community, uh, working on different um, uh, you know, work groups uh, and uh, kind of just wanting to, we truly want to advance the, the state of the art for Node.js in different ways and, um, and with our contributions. So if you're interested in talking to us more, uh, find us at the booth, I'll be there as well. And uh, you know, uh, we can have some more conversation there. With that, um, Michael Dawson. Hi, I'm Michael Dawson. I'm IBM's community lead for Node.js. And what that means is that I get to spend a lot of my time working in the community. So you'll see me, I'm, I'm quite active in the working groups. Um, I'm a member of the TC, TSC member, and of course a Node.js collaborator. So I participate in things like the benchmarking work group, the build work group, and of course, of course the postmortem work group, um, and the API working group where we're working on the, the NEPI here. I also work with our internal teams where we've done some really cool things like porting V8 and Node.js to platforms like PowerPC and S390. So I get to spend uh, you know, some of my time also working with the teams and some of them who are also involved in the, in the NAPI effort as well in terms of bringing those capabilities to Node.js as well. Arunish? All right. So apart from just the two of us, um, the NAPI project uh, was uh, a big community collaboration including individual members uh, uh, in the community and also um, the Node.js member, uh, Node.js Foundation members, as companies uh, as well. So this, this has been a, a really good uh, uh, community example of a good com uh, community collaboration that we have done. So with that, um, let's uh, start to answer this question, what is NAPI? Uh, NAPI is a stable Node API layer for native module that provides ABI compatibility uh, guarantees across node versions and uh, different flavors as well. So today, due to the lack of this uh, ABI compatibility uh, surface in node, the module ecosystem in Node.js uh, suffers uh, from, from breakage for every new node release that happens. So every new node release, native modules will have to kind of, um, get updated with, uh, with the new version or get recompiled and stuff like that. So according to some estimates, there are like 30% uh, of the module ecosystem uh, gets broken uh, or gets impacted by this, uh, this kind of uh, lack of stability. So if, if this was some other kind of feature that impacts uh, such a large surface, you know, we would be like really upset about it. So, um, but you know, we have kind of taken this as, a, as how things are, but they don't have to be like that. And uh, that's where um, this API, um, uh, stable API uh, comes into picture. Um, the breakage impact is basically the module maintainers um, have to you know, spend cost, time maintaining, uh, updating the, the uh, modules for newer version support. And also what it does is there is um, the people who consume these modules in production system, they are hesitant to upgrade to latest you know, versions of Node because of this um, uh, uh, fear of uh, compatibility. So that's the kind of thing what this NAPI is trying to solve. 
And this is available as experimental in, uh, in Node.js 8. It came out uh, earlier uh, this year in May. So um, the, why we should care about Nappy is again, you know, uh, as I said, that um, Nappy enabled modules uh, will improve uh, experience for module consumers. Uh, it will reduce friction in, uh, in production deployments to be upgraded to newer version of Node. And also, you know, save cost in uh, module maintainers' uh, cost of maintaining a native module. Uh, the, the evidence we have here was a, a tweet from Dan Shaw uh, sometime back that a mission-critical native code dependency is the number one reason why people are not upgrading to Node. So this is, this is a big problem. The responses, you know, has been really great so far. You know, in just uh, about four months of its uh, broad availability, uh, we have seen a real big spike uh, in, uh, in interest in people. So this is around, you know, 1,500 uh, downloads. Uh, we, are, we are reaching the 1,500 downloads of the node add-on API module uh, that we have on uh, NPMJS. And, you know, on Twitter, people are really, you know, talking good things about it, so, so we're happy. A lot of people ask, uh, is, is it uh, uh, a new NAD? And uh, the answer is, uh, it pretty, pretty much is the, the evolution of uh, NAD. Uh, NAPI has a, a more complete uh, isolation from V8. Um, you can compile it once and run it uh, in, on multiple versions and even flavors. Uh, they're both C and C++. Uh, usage supported for this. And uh, we have been uh, you know, talking to uh, the NAND maintainers, uh, and, and we see that NAPI, uh, or we, we, NAPI is expected to replace the, the NAND usage over time. So, so this is the, the way um, for the future. Uh, if you're a native module maintainer today, this is something you should be looking at um, as the, the, the evolution of NAND. <clears throat> So while we were uh, working on this, uh, designing these, um, these uh, ABI stable uh, APIs, we uh, looked at you know, popular modules to uh, understand the surface that was needed to be abstracted out. And in the process, we have actually successfully ported uh, these modules, Node SAS, Canvas, SQLite, Level Down, Nano Message, ITV. These are popular uh, modules and have a you know, pretty sufficient uh, API surface that, that was linked to V8, and we were able to uh, replace uh, that with uh, an API successfully. So enough uh, talking. Um, let me show you uh, a demo of what this actually looks like. So I'm going to show you a demo. Uh, let me just get my screens uh, all set up here. So I'm going to use this. Uh, hold on one more thing. Okay. All right, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very simple demo. Um, there's a, this app uh, just reads and writes from a, a level DB database. And this database is accessed through um, a native module level down. And, uh, you know, it just shows that a uh, native module is, using, uh, is being used in an app, and how does it perform if you change the node binary underneath it. So the first thing uh, I'll kind of show you here is that um, this app is uh, using um, uh, level down. So you can see this uh, package.json here uh, is using our own private build of, uh, a nappy build of uh, level down from our, our uh, private fork. So um, basically here what we have do I've done is, you know, to sort of save time, uh, I have installed uh, and compiled uh, the native module uh, once for, you know, just to set up this demo. So what I'm going to do is just show you uh, that we have this uh, level down dot node. So you can see that there is uh, one level down dot node file. This is actually a Windows uh, machine. So you have a, 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 a native module which was built using a particular version. 
and uh, I'm gonna just run this app. So this app, can uh, you can run it. Uh, I use a version switcher called NVS, it's pretty sweet. Um, so let's use Node, there are two uh, versions of Node installed, uh, Node 8.6 uh, uh, version, which is the latest build, and Node Chakra Core uh, nightly version, which is on, on nine. Um, so let's use Node, uh, Node 8.6, and we can see the version here. And we just say node app.js. And it is running this, uh, this app on this endpoint, which we're gonna go and check. Uh, so here, this app is running. And uh, you can see it's saying that uh, the node version, which is uh, 8.6, current time, and it's just a simple app, so let's just add some entries to this label DB database. And if you have added it, it says that it was added by this node version. And, um, and then we go back to our, uh, this thing here, and kill this and just switch to a, a different version of Node. So let's use Node Chakra Core here. And then without doing anything, we are in the same folder. Uh, we, we didn't do anything else. We just do node app.js. We just change the, the node binary underneath it. And we come here, we refresh it. It is running on Node Chakra Core. It has read the previous entries from the database using the same native module, and you can still write to it. Right? It is pretty cool. Right? There's nothing, no recompilation, nothing. You change the binary underneath it, and the st uh, stuff still works. So that's the power uh, of uh, an API if you can provide for your consumers uh, if you have uh, native modules. And uh, with that, I'm going to let uh, Michael Dawson take it. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, so now that Arunish has given us a good idea of why we care about the NAPI and a good demo of the power of it in action, being able to run the same module compiled once with two different versions of the, the, the VM and even two different runtimes running underneath, I'm going to delve into a little bit of the the, the, the code, so you can see and give, you know, you can see and get a flavor of what it's gonna be like to work with the NAPI and, and, and what the API is like. So what is the NAPI? It's a collection of C APIs. Uh, we use C as opposed to C++ to make sure that it's as ABI stable as possible. And we do have some C++ options, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. If you want to go, uh, you know, sort of read about it, it's already part of the standard node API docs, so you can go to the 8.6 docs, We've done a good job of documenting all the functions. It tells you what the parameters are, how you can call them, how to use them, and so forth. Of course, if you have the node source tree open, you can just go to source node underscore API dot H if you want to do that. Open it up, take a look. I have a few of the functions down here just to give you a flavor of, of what they're like. There's a number of conventions that I'll walk you through because they apply to all the different functions. The first thing you'll notice is that there's the, the first parameter is always an API M. That's an opaque structure which whenever your JavaScript functions get called, uh, your, your native code gets called from JavaScript, you'll be passed this env, and you need to pass it back when you make any of the API calls, and you'll notice it's the first parameter of all the API calls. So really that's just something that you need to do to help you know, maintain the consistency across all of the different calls. The other thing you'll notice is that they all return a nappy status. So that basically tells you whether your call, you know, what you requested to have happen was successful or not. And really, it can tell you one of three things. It can say nappy OK, in which case it means, yeah, your request was successful. You can just keep on going. Don't do, you don't need, need to do any other checks. If it tells you that an exception was thrown, so really, you know, you can get two kinds of errors. You could get a JavaScript exception where something happened, you know, at the JavaScript level, or you can get an error at the C, C++ level, um, you know, behind in your, in your add-on. And so in one case, it'll tell you whether there was a JavaScript exception there are functions like nappy get and clear last exception. So if your code is smart enough to say, well, I know what that exception is, I expected it to happen, 
you can actually get it, check it, and clear it. I expect most often, though, you know, when an exception happens, what you'll do is you'll simply do a little bit of cleanup and then return back to JavaScript where the exception will get thrown, pop, you know, basically percolate through the stack traces just as if that had been thrown in JavaScript itself. The other thing the nappy status can tell you is if something happened at the C level. So, for example, you made a, a nappy create array and you passed in an invalid argument. You passed in an M, which isn't actually an M. We'll return you an error code that says, hey, you had an, an illegal argument. And there's about 10 or 15 different error codes. The one wrinkle is if you get one of those error codes, you may also have a JavaScript exception pending. So if you get that error and think you're going to be able to handle it and continue on, you should also first check that you know, NAPI is, ex is exception pending and see if, one's, if there's an exception pending as well. And if so, if you want to continue, you're going to have to handle that as well. As a result of us always returning a nappy status, of course, the you know, functions where you've asked it to do something that returns something, the return values are through like in out parameters. So in that case, you know, you'll see the last call of nappy create array is a nappy value and you get your results back uh, as that in out parameter. So that's another thing you're gonna see across, across the API. So, that sort of gives you a general feeling. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a, a particular example. And if you've worked with add-ons before, you're probably already aware of the NAN add-on examples. And basically what they were was a set of examples that did some common patterns that you would need in your, in your add-on. And they had examples for how that was done with NAN, how it was done with version 10 of Node and version 12 with Node, because they were all slightly different. What we've done is we've gone and extended that, so there's now versions that do the same thing for an API, and what I'll talk about a little bit later, the Node add-on API as well. So the N API examples are the ones that, that uh, show how you would code it in, in, the C++, in the C API. And this example basically just says, we're gonna have uh, JavaScript call us, pass us a callback, which we're then gonna invoke with a parameter, you know, something that we're commonly gonna do. In this case, I've had to spread the code over uh, two, different, um, two different pages, so I, I left the code out of the run callbacks, which we'll see in the next, uh, the next uh, slide. But the rest of what we see here is kind of the setup. And if you've written add-on modules, it'll look fairly familiar, just subtly different. So just as before, you know, we have an init module, an init function, which is what you're gonna define as your entry point. And in that case, you know, the main difference is it takes any API types, as opposed to the, the V8 types. And so we have an env and an exports. One thing you might notice is that there's no module being passed in, which, which is done in the, the existing APIs. We abstracted that out because we didn't want to be tied to common JavaScript. We kind of wanted to be future-proofing against supporting um, the, the, the new module loaders as well. Um, and we looked at it and there was no cases where people actually needed to use the modules itself. In this case, you can see that you know, I'm basically saying, okay, I'm gonna create a function. I'm not naming it in this case, and I simply return that as my export. So again, something that should be pretty familiar too. Instead of node module, you use nappy module passing in that initialization function. And we just have a macro up here to, to declare an nappy method, which is really a shortcut for de defining properties on an object. And you know, there's a whole bunch of different options, but this particular set lets me create a property which is a function on a, on a particular object. Looking at the code itself, um, you know, basically, as I said, we're gonna get a callback. Um, so we're, we're, our function is invoked, and we're gonna get a callback, which is the first argument of what was passed to that function. So the first thing we're doing here is you see nappy get callback info, so I'm just asking for the callback, basically the parameters that were passed to me when we were called. A few interesting things to note is that in many places we've tried to make it easier. Um, if you're not interested in some of the information that the call can give you, you can optionally pass in null pointer. So in this case, you can get the this and the data pointer, but you don't have to. If you pass in null pointer, then we just don't return it to you. We start out by getting the callback. Then we call a string. We create a string with nappy create string. The interesting thing here is again with strings, we've added a shortcut where if the string is null terminated, you can pass in this nappy auto length instead of providing the length itself. If it's not null terminated, of course, you can provide the length. We then just get the global environment because we're going to use it to actually call the function. And you know, having got the callback we're supposed to call from the arguments, the parameter we want to pass it, which is hello world, 
we then just call nappy call function to actually invoke that function. That, that'll get run back in, in JavaScript. I think you'll notice that the, the NAPI, you know, when you, when you look at the functions, it's always, it's, it's pretty clear what's going on. And I think when you read the docs for each of those, it should be pretty obvious how you work with them to achieve the different things that you want to do. One of the things I've got in this, this, the bottom corner that I'm not going to go through, but if you're using uh, the, the node source tree where you've compiled node itself, it's sometimes a little tricky to get things set up so that you've got NPM, node JIP, and everything so you can actually work with that on modules. And that's just a little, little set of uh, setup that I use to do that and make, makes it pretty easy. So as I mentioned, NAPI is C-oriented, and you might be saying, well, wait a second, you know, I've used NAN, it's C++, I like C++, it's, it's efficient. Well, we understand that, and so we've also worked on the C++ wrapper module. It's not actually formally part of the NAPI, but it is a module that's under the Node.js foundation. If you go to Node.js in GitHub, Node.js slash node add-on API. And what it is, is a C++ wrapper, which is basically purely include, include. so it's, it's, it comes down to this syntactic sugar, where the only external calls that it makes are to the NAPI call. So if you compile using this wrapper, you're effectively just using the NAPI function calls, and therefore you'll be able to run the same add-on in with different versions of Node.js as well, just like you did as if you'd written in C. If you want to go read about it more, uh, you can go to the GitHub repo. It's obviously also in, available in NPM where you can just install it. We do have a start of the documentation for the, 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 the sort of classes and methods that are available. That's an area where we could definitely use more, more help because we know that it's, it's not complete yet. The, the documentation for the C API is very complete, but this, this one could still use some help. So looking at the same example that we looked at before, as I mentioned, you know, we, we've ported all the examples to both the NAPI version and the Node add-on API version. So this will give you a feeling for what it looks to, to move your module from NAN to the Node add-on API. And you should see it's, it's very familiar. So again, instead of Node module, we're using Node add-on, Node a API module. We have, uh, you know, still have our run callback. Can very easily using the the classes extract the first parameter from the info, which is the the callback info that was passed to us. We can do on that callback, you know, we can we can basically invoke it by calling make, make callback uh, with a string that we're based, that we're creating in line. So as you can see, you know, the code ends up being as simple or simpler than the NAND versions, and you know, similarly we have our init function just like we did before, where we effectively create a function and return it. The other thing we've done to help you move from NAN is that there is a converter. So you can run this converter. It'll take your NAN module and try and convert all of the calls that are there into the, NA, into the NAPI versions. Now, it's not complete. It probably does maybe 80% of the, the transition for you, but it's a good way to start out by you know, running that, having it do a bunch of the conversions for you, and then you can go through and actually you know, fix up the, the, the remaining part to convert your module over. In terms of actually using the NAPI, um, you know, it's available today in, in 8.x, as Arunish mentioned. Uh, we recently removed the flag, so you don't need to put anything on the command line to use it. You will get warned if you invoke it with, a with an NAPI module, just saying, hey, it's still experimental. Um, but once, you know, once it comes out of experimental, we do plan to move it back to, to backport to 6.x. We don't necessarily plan to, to, to move it back to 4.x because we're fairly far into the LTS lifecycle of 4.x. But we are working on things to make it easier to develop your modules and support 4 along with the other versions. So the first thing we've done is we actually have in that NPM wrapper module, we've bundled in a copy of the NAPI code that works with version 4 so that at least you can compile your module with a single code base. You can have one code base which will compile and then run on 4.x you won't necessarily get the forward compatibility. If you do that, you're going to have to recompile for 6.x, um, but at least you can have your single code base. For 6.x, you should be able to compile and then run on 6 and 8 and so forth. To make it even easier, we're still trying to work on uh, a version where we actually build a shared library for version 4, which, which would allow us to you know, basically compile once and then load that library if you're running on 4, and if you're running on the other versions, defer to the version that's actually built into the node runtime itself. 
So that's really where we'd like to get to because it'll make it really easy to support all of the LTS versions. We're still working on that though in terms of you know, validating that it's going to work across the different platforms and figuring out you know, any of the nuances in terms of loading shared libraries that are going to happen across the different platforms. So at this point, you know, I, I think we've shown that you know, some of the data that Rona showed you, we've, we've built the NAPI, we've got a fair amount of feedback, we've used it to port a number of the popular modules. We did a number of performance, ana you know, performance analysis where you know, said for the common use case, we think it's going to be good. And what we really need now is help from module maintainers and module owners to, to help port more and more modules to you know, basically hit the critical mass where we can start moving over to using it in, instead of NAN. Uh, if you're not a module, module maintainer, it would still be great if you, if you could help by trying them out, looking at the documentation, particularly the, the C++ wrapper. You know, there's, there's nothing like end users who haven't been involved in using the, the APIs to contribute to the documentation. You know, we're pretty close to it, so what we write may seem obvious to us, but it won't be to you guys. So people getting involved in the documentation. We actually have good test coverage. If you go to coverage.nosejs.org, for any API, the core, we have very good test coverage, but we still need improved test coverage on the wrapper. So that's, again, somewhere where people could help out and, and help build our test coverage there. The NAPI Working Group meets once a week on Thursdays. Uh, so if you're interested and, and have time to contribute, we'd like to see you there. Feel free to join and you'll see the conversation. That's where we get together, prioritize the work that needs to get done, and sort of sync on all the different things that we're working on. A few other things. Um, oops. Yeah, thanks. A few other things, some useful links. So as I mentioned, if you want to start migrating your existing modules from NAND to NAPI, there's the link to the conversion tool. It's actually part of the NPM add-on API, uh, node add-on API module. So if you install that, you have the conversion tool. If you look at the GitHub readme, it'll tell you how to use it. And like I said, you know, it's a good start. Um, and if you do use it and find it's not doing some of the things that you, you think it could, it'd be great to you know, give us that feedback or submit PRs to help make it even better. If you're starting from scratch, the other thing that uh, one of the API team models, team, yeah, one of the NAPI team members did is they created a Yeoman generator. So you can use that genera generator, uh, generator to create all the scaffolding you need, need to build a new NAPI module. So basically you can run that, you then have a template, you can fill in your own code and get started really easily. And finally, the last thing is that we know that there's going to be a transition time. You know, it's not going to be like today we're, we're running the existing modules and tomorrow they're all NAPI modules. So we've written up some guidance on how to publish, you know, two versions of your module, a version that, you know, is currently being used with the normal modules and an NAPI version so that people can use it in, in, the, inter, in the interim. So I think, you know, that, that's what we had to tell you. Uh, we're really looking forward to, you know, more uh, feedback, involvement, and, you know, I think if we leave you with one thing, it's if you're a module maintainer, please get in touch with us and you know we're we're looking to help and work with people to to, to help move move modules over. All right. So I Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to clap. Thanks. Thank you. I think we have a few minutes. We still have about three minutes, so if people have questions, we could take those. Okay, I got a really dumb question. I know what API stands for. What is an API? ABI stands for, like, even if you don't change the API, you may not be able to use a compiled artifact with a different version. It's an application binary interface. Ah, so even... Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so for example, in 8, so when you, between 6 and 8, the API may be exactly the same, but today you still won't be able to use something compiled against 6 with 8. Because the binary changed and uh, the API signature may be the same, but the behavior somehow changed. How stable is the API? What, today? What future changes do you... So today, as it's been an experimental over the last few months, we have been making a few changes. Um, and we've actually made a few breaking changes because, you know, being an experimental, we, we thought it was better to clean up the API a little bit than doing it in a way where we didn't change it. As of the 8.6 release, we've decided, you know, we're basic, our goal now is like, we're not going to change the API unless we really have to. So it's still experimental, so it's not impossible, but 
we've gotten to the point where it's like, okay, if we need to add a parameter to a method to do something new, we'll actually create a new version of that method and so it won't break the existing code. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, oh, one. sorry, one more. What it really did comes down to is your use case. So we did a number of, of benchmarks. And um, if you go to the node add-on API <coughs> repo, you can find uh, issues where we've done that. On, I forget the numbers because actually we don't have them in the deck right now, but for a lot of the common use cases, it was within the 5%. Not even. So, so I think, it, again, it, it depends on the, the use case. Um, typically what happens is when a, a native module is used, um, they, if you use it like one, one call which does a long running task and come back, you know, that use case, we are expecting less than 3%. Even, you know, 3% is also, what we have seen in our product modules is, is uh, less than 3% of overhead. Uh, but if, if you are doing something really very chatty across the, the binary surface, that is where, you know, it could become, uh, you know, we have seen it uh, upwards, so, uh, up to actually 10% right now. And we, we are still um, have some ideas of how to, to improve performance. We have not uh, really gone deeper into that. But again, you know, it is, is going to be driven by the, f the fact how, what kind of use case people are running into and what kind of optimization that we have to make. Yeah, so I, I think in the ones that we've already done, there was one canvas which is very chatty going back and forth. So that's yes. where we saw a bigger overhead. The other ones that we ported in that list, it was all within, you know, our goal is like, we figure less than 10% is probably acceptable in most cases. We do understand that not everybody is going to be able to use the NAPI. Um, you know, there's some cases where if you're so performance centric or you want to use things we haven't exposed in the NAPI, like things that are very specific to V8, you may, you know, you may still need to fall back to writing uh, a regular add-on. And we're not going to do anything to prevent that. But we do think that you know, a good portion of the modules will be just fine with the overhead that's there and that the benefits of not having to recompile, being able to have a single binary, will be compelling enough that, you know, unless you have a good reason not to, that's what every, you know, 80, 90% of the people are gonna to wanna to do. I think we're running okay, out of time. Okay, I think we're at time, so thank you very much. All right, thanks.